Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ian from Equity Warehouse. Um, started this new series. Uh, we're bringing in uh, investors who invest in some of our deals, getting their experience, just seeing what it looks like, how they um, overcame the hurdle of joining us and jumping in. So I thought a first great guest to talk about their investment experience working with Equity Warehouse and just really real estate as a whole would be Jason Balin, who is my co-host uh, on our podcast called Real Estate Reserve Podcast. But more importantly, uh, him and his business partner, Chris, have invested quite a bit of money into a few of our deals and uh, love to hear their story. Jason, what's up, brother? What's up? Hey, Ian. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, I know. Roles are a little reversed here, guys. So if it feels a little awkward, just want to be transparent. But um, Jason and I do co-host a podcast, so it's interesting to be the host. And he's actually officially the guest. But Jason, you just want to give a background for those that don't know you, who you are and where you're from? <clears throat> sure. Jason Bailen, Hard Money Bankers. I started Hard Money Bankers in 2007 with my business partner, Chris Haddon. So, you know, we've been going on, if you're watching this in real time, we've been going on 16 plus years at this point of a private lender, we don't have any bank or institutional back capital. It's all private, private capital, our own and private lenders that we raise money from at a funky economic time in 2007. And we've lent on, you know, three, almost 4,000 projects uh, locally to real estate investors, uh, yeah. fix and flip uh, yeah. investors and commercial property owners. Yeah. I mean, we were early, I mean, early enough borrowers early in our careers and somewhat early in your guys careers we were early borrowers um and you know we started to establish a relationship and, and very early on i was always like man like how can we work with jason and chris because they had the elusive all this capital and we talked about a lot of different things and then i think the first deal that you actually officially invested some equity on was white house manor apartments the 76 unit apartment building and i just really just want to kind of ask you like what was the hurdle that you had investing into one of our equity deals um, and what allowed you to get comfortable to invest in that deal? Well, I mean, for us, we already had a relationship in, in general between partnering on doing loans for single family properties, performance on single family properties. I don't know how many we have we had done in those in the past, but, you know, multiple. Right. So we already knew each other. We already had a relationship. We already knew that, you know, you guys had a real built out operation and were serious uh, from expanding into the smaller one-off stuff into the larger projects. And it was also a space that Chris and I wanted to be in. Um, you know, at that time we had a bunch of rental properties that we kind of hated and we were unloading our rental properties, but we still understood the value of being in real estate. So we still wanted the benefits of ownership of real estate without necessarily the heavy lifting of operating it. So that that's what that's the reason you guys wanted to get into what we would call equity deals where you wanted to be a limited partner. It was the fact that you could own a big piece of real estate without having to do all the work. Yeah, absolutely. Was, you know, to get involved in to get involved in owning real estate without having to be, you know, heavy lifting and, you know, full transparency. And you know this and I don't think this is um you know, you know a, a secret you know i run a hard money lending company and you know we make a decent rate of return on the capital that we deploy so on deals that we look at in order to lend or in order to invest with in, in other real estate with other operators you know besides the most important thing of relationship based and trust but it also has to achieve a return that makes sense and that return differs for whoever some people are you know some people are looking for you know a very you know maybe 4 or 5% conservative return on, you know, and getting depreciation and having the other benefits of own, owning real estate. Ours, you know, selfishly is slightly higher because we, you know, lend our own money out in, um, you know, high interest rate loans. But again, you know, if it makes sense, it's it's a project that, you know, we've we've always wanted to be involved in and we've continued to invest in deals like that. So... I mean, just trying to make it as transparent for everybody. You know, it's really just an education piece. Whether you invest with us, you invest with Jason and Chris, or you invest with any other syndicator that you might see out on the internet. You know, one thing that Jason and Chris taught me early on was, you know, we look at it as a co-investment. Um, you know, you're my friend. You know, families involved, our firemen, our coworkers, they're all involved. Um, but with that being said, like, what was your biggest fear in investing or what was your biggest downside hur downside hurdle that you had to overcome to allow you to hop in to that first 76 unit apartment building? So I didn't really have a fear of 
of the building. I didn't really have a fear of you guys as operators. I didn't really even have a fear of losing money in that particular deal. I mean, we wanted to make sure it was an investment vehicle that made sense if we were going to take our own capital away from our hard money lending portfolio that we control, that we're the experts in, that we do every single day. So there was a fear of, hey, if we, uh, you know, I don't remember what our first investment was, $150,000 or something. Yeah. But if we take this $150,000 off the table and deploy it into a real estate project that in essence could take a longer period of time than our typical hard money loan, could potentially on the short term be a, a smaller rate of return than we're used to in a hard money loan. Does it make sense in the long term? Um, you know, whatever the pro forma was for that first deal, call it five years. You know, we're getting a, a, a smaller rate of return that we're used to. We're taking capital of ours off the table of a producing vehicle that we already have to put it into something with the hopes that it's going to perform, pay out some sort of pref. And then in the long run, uh, either through a sale or refinance or equity event, or just through cash flow from you know the you know the building being successful, outperform what our current investment was already giving us. <laughs> yeah, and I think maybe targeting you as like a target demo, but you know a lot of our other friends and family as well is like cash flow is important. Being able to pay pref out in real time has been important because I know that's a a stickler point for you because you guys already have a cash flow machine. Um, and I would almost ask side by side with that is like. Sorry, I know your background really, really well, but you've invested in some angel deals, right? Like early business equity deals. How does that compare to investing into this? Do you view it into the real estate syndication? Do you view it as the same bucket or are they completely different buckets to you? They're, they're different buckets. I mean, angel deals are more you throw in, you know, you throw kind of a small bet at something with hope for a big win. I haven't had that big win on any angel deals and I've been involved in, you know, half a dozen maybe, maybe more uh, on them. And, you know, it's the hopes that you take a startup or a company that, you know, isn't all that profitable, not real estate, not collateral by real estate, a company. And, you know, hopefully you get a 10 X, a hundred X return, which could happen you know, in, in, in that. Um, so we, you know, not that I would never do any of those angel deals in the past, but like, uh, you know, I like these real estate deals. I like this relationship that we have on these. I like you know, I understand real estate. I believe to be, you know, I believe that I'm an expert in real estate in general, and I know what I'm looking at on on some of these projects. And again, you know, when I started, you know, some of these commercial deals with you, I actually didn't really know the commercial stuff. So it actually taught me to to learn it a little bit better and to read pro formas, to look at a lot of due due diligence documents that I didn't actually know all that well at the time. And it's actually helped with my lending career because we lend pretty aggressively on all of these projects over the last five years now, four or five years. So it's actually <laughs> helped on that side. But I, but I think the angel stuff in general, it you know it's it's cha it's challenging, and you know there's no backstop of real estate on it. And again, you could get a bigger return. And again, I think in any investment, it depends your risk tolerance, right? If you want to be like the most conservative conservative like t bills only and you're willing to get you know which now is actually probably a decent rate of like five percent but like years ago it wasn't you know that's one side and if you want to get a hundred percent return on your capital or a thousand percent return on your capital which is possible you need to be an active investor uh so i think kind of somewhere not necessarily between that obviously but like somewhere based on your risk tolerance and you know what you're you know, what, what you're comfortable with works. And, you know, I think most of these deals, you know, the, uh, the adjusted return that, you know, you're a, that you're able to provide to your capital investors, you know, on paper up front might only look like whatever, six, seven, eight, nine, 10%. But on the back end, you know, and you blend, you know, uh, an equity event, it could turn into, you know, 12, 15, 18, 20, percent which which turns into a, you know a real big number yeah you've you've been a part of a few deals that you know we've had some really nice refinances on um that we've had some nice tailwinds on we're coming up on maybe selling some that we we should have some additional really nice equity liquidity events that you know you're you're it becomes tax-free at that point or i'm sorry it's a better way to look at it it's not tax-free but you have no equity left in the deal and your returns become infinite I think that's the one thing that we can outperform in your hard money business. Um, yeah. 
because we, we joke about it all the time. Jason has a lot of cash flow, but we have much more net worth per se and a much more earning potential based on some stuff that we do versus Jason has to yeah. do more loans. So um, it, it's it, fun it, to compare and look. So well, let me have one other thing that I think is an important note. And one thing that we were attracted to that we weren't attracted to on other real estate investment deals was the uh, preferred payment and was taking chips off the table. You know, both of us know investors that have invested whatever, a hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars into a deal. It doesn't really matter what that number is. And then in five years, there's a hopes of a sale where you're going to get one big lump sum. But like, number one, your money's not doing anything for you in real time. Who knows if that performance will really happen? We like being involved in stuff that is that we're taking chips off the table, right? So like, if we're getting a six, seven, eight, ten percent. You know, return in real time plus some sort of equity kicker in the future. Like, you know, five years from now, you know, you put up, I mean, think about it. Let's say you get a 10% return on or whatever, 8% return on something, right? And you put up $100,000. You're getting $8,000 off the table back to you every year, right? 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000. So, like, even if the deal ends up, you know, not being a winner or going sideways or not uh, selling at the price it stood. You could like you're, you're taking money off the table every month you're getting your investment back and i think that's i think that's important and i'm not saying that every deal that you know, that you've ever done is structured that way but i think that's an added an added piece we we look to structure in that way because we always like the drips that's why we started buying rental real estate so we can get the little drips a couple hundred bucks off each house here we go here we go next you know it stacks up same thing with the like we're getting ready this is being recorded uh early april we're getting ready to send out pref payments here come the drips. It makes the investment real and it makes it fun, you know, and like you said, who's to say going forward that we might not structure it in a different way because it has to be. But as of today, that's, that's what we've done. And we're going to highlight some deals that maybe not have gone as planned. Um, but you know, I, I want to keep these short, uh, just because it's easy to consume. Uh, Jason, just want to ask you one last question. How do you see yourself investing in syndications uh, or LP type deals, whether it's with us or somebody else? Um, how does that fit into your investment profile going forward over the next, say, five to 10 years? We aggressively want to be in that investment profile and invest in different syndications and different asset classes. And you know we're willing to put a lot of money into, into these on the right deals, obviously, right? Not just every deal on the right deals, and then, and and that's the thing with anything else. I've always, I'm always a big believer. If if you have a good deal, it's easy to find the capital for it, right? Like if you have a good enough deal, like the capital will follow. So for the right deals with the right operators, on the right asset class, that can produce the returns that we need to make you know to make sense. Yeah, man. Jason, I just want to say I don't get to do this often, but I'd like to say thank you to you and Chris. You know, you've helped us learn how to raise capital, but more importantly, um, it's been fun to be able to now actually partner, not just be a customer and work together. And I look forward to the future. Um, if you guys don't know, Jason's usually one of my first calls to say, hey, I'm working on X, Y and Z just because it's fun to talk business. And I'd like to say thank you for that. And guys, we're going to catch you on the next one. We'll be highlighting um, some of our investors or people that have invested in syndications going forward. Just, you know, hopefully it helps you learn more about what it is, how it works, what it does. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.